This video is going to look a bit different because I'm not at my usual studio as such, my usual bench. I'm at another one, and it's one of many different studio benches I'll be using over the next uh, several weeks as I bounce backwards and forwards between Scotland and the Isle of Man. It's just my busy time of year work-wise. But as I was uh, heading out, oh, you'll notice the sound is completely different. I'm doing my best here. Uh, I've got a one of the little clip-on microphones on. However, I also have a huge beard, which is probably going to have a horrible conflict with that microphone at some point, make lots of scratchy noises. But uh, anyway, getting back to the subject in hand, which is this lovely little ceiling fan from Banggood. And I was actually on Banggood looking for some other stuff and initially threw up a fan for 12 volt use. And I was looking at it and thinking, all right, it's a, it's a small fan. It's quite neat. And I thought, could that be used, the 12 volt one? Could it be used as a wind turbine? And then I thought, actually, you know what? The, uh, the, it, as it usually does, when I was looking at the 12 volt one, it threw up the 220 volt one. And I thought, oh, that's quite interesting as well. So it'd be interesting just to see what the motor assembly is in this. So I'm going to turn it on, and this is where it might just completely obliterate the sound on the microphone. So I'll turn it on anyway, and we'll see what happens. So um, hopefully it's not just making a loud roaring ear noise at the moment, because it does put out quite a lot of air. The strange pattern is because of the scanning of the video. It's uh, seeing the blades coming up the way at that side and down the way at this side. So it's uh, get, get, it's kind of a Doppler effect, I suppose, in a way. But this is a powerful wee fan, and it's got a very interesting motor. So let's uh, stop this uh, at the moment, stop the video, uh, and switch to a different uh, closer viewing angle, and we'll take it to bits. So uh, I hopefully locked focus, autofocus now. Uh, I can't guarantee that I'll see afterwards. Um, however, the way this comes apart and the way it's supplied is that the fan blades unclip. Once you've clipped them in, they clip in quite securely and after you've had them in there a few times, it does loosen up. I'm not sure I should do that too many times or they're just gonna fly out while it's spinning one day. But nonetheless, that's them out. This is, uh, honestly, it ships a tiny wee box, literally like that. Uh, and you can imagine, it's just a little cardboard box with a cable rolled around this. It's just really small the way it ships. It's really neat. So once that's removed, there's a end cap can come off. Again, it doesn't come off this easy normally, but uh, I've had it on and off a few times while exploring this. And then there's a, oh, screwdrivers. I need screwdrivers. There's a motor in there. And let's take this uh, plastic cover off. So these three screws come out. The motor it's using is a synchronous motor and it's quite interesting. Uh, it can technically run in both directions and if you stall the fan, if, if you deliberately stop it and just give it a flick in the opposite direction, the fan will run in the opposite direction. So uh, now that's out, we can actually see the motor inside there. And you can see it's a sort of series of metal fins. And to give you an idea of how this works, I'm going to actually draw the way the motor's arranged here. So imagine uh, a drum of cable that looks like, a, a you know, there's the side of the drum and there's the core going through it. And then there's the other side of the drum. And what they've done here is, if this is it viewed from the side, so there's the core going through between the two round end cheeks of the drum. They've got a cable going in, and then it just basically just winds round and round and round in a nice thick layer and then comes back out again. And that basically creates an AC electromagnet. With, you know, and when AC is put across it, each side will alternate north and south. Then they put a metal plate on one side as a sort of core with fingers and if you can imagine two sets, there's actually one on either side, but they're actually interfacing at a comb like this with one side's fingers inter interwoven with the other side's metal fingers. And as a result of that, uh, you end up with a, the, there's the core in the middle. And you've got these metal fingers that look like this. So I'm just going to draw eight. There's actually effectively nine in each plate, but it's much easier to draw eight than it is to draw nine. And they are on a sort of metal plate that looks roughly like, um, actually it's more sort of down and squarish. But the idea is that um, that's one side, one sort of uh, polarity, and then the other side, uh, then the fingers mesh from the other side like that. 
And what that means is that when this is powered by AC, these fingers alternate uh, between north and south. And, you know, while these ones on this side are north, the other ones on the other side will be south. And because they form a sort of ring of the fingers round, you get a sort of uh, alternating magnetic waveform. And if I then uh, turn the flip this over and I doodled a bigger bit out earlier on, the plastic housing, uh, there's a bearing here. I'd like to pull this off, but it really is in tight because it's designed to stop the fan falling off the ceiling, basically. And there's a ring of magnets actually glued around the plastic outer that's actually rotating because the uh, magnetic bit in here, the actual motor part, stays still. And the ultimately the rotor, in this case, because it's rotating, uh, rotates around the active stator, which is the static bit. So uh, what they've got here is, if this is the outer ring, they've got these magnets just stuck end to end, and they're, they're sized fairly neatly to actually fit, be a perfect fit. And there's a metal plate uh, at the back joining them all for to actually increase the strength of the magnetic field. Uh, and they're just hovering outside the actual motor. So with the motor uh, plates alternating north and south, these magnets, which correlate uh, spacing-wise to all those poles, will be wanting to move backwards and forwards. But once you give it direction, once you give it inertia, that alternating movement will result in a sort of rotation. And here's the interesting thing. Now, a standard synchronous motor wants to rotate in either direction. It's, it, and it will, you know, normally, say for instance, look at your microwave oven turntable. They usually contain synchronous motors. And when you turn your microwave oven on, quite often the turntable will just go in a random direction. It, it doesn't really matter in those instances. It's like mirror ball rotators as well use that same technique that, you know, it doesn't matter the direction of rotation. It will just go in that. And in this case, to stop that happening, the shaft is spring-loaded. It can actually rotate. What's the best way to show this? It can rotate that way. Uh, but if you turn it the other way, it won't rotate. And it's got a spring to make sure it returns to that uh, position. I'm just going to pop the end off and show you that because it's the best way to prove what's actually in there. So if I pull this, hold on, just a few more turns on that. So there's this spring in here and the arrangement they've got is this. If the motor starts in the wrong direction, if the tr fan tries to run the wrong direction, because it's got a huge mass of blades, a sort of, you know, just a general sort of inertia to overcome, this it will try and rotate the shaft. And if it's rotated one way, the shaft will lock. It won't go any further. And the motor doesn't like that. It can't get its rotation, so it will kick. It will go in the opposite direction. If it's going the opposite direction, then because uh, this can rotate freely in that direction, albeit spring-loaded, to return to its default position, it will allow the blades to actually go in that direction. And once they've got that tiny bit of inertia, they'll keep going in that direction. And this will take up the slack by rotating a modest... Uh, amount of, uh, I'm not sure if it does, I think it does multiple revolutions, but it doesn't really need that uh, to get started. But once the, the blades are up to speed, they'll happily run that direction. So it's a very simple mechanism at just really stalling one direction, but um, actually allowing it to rotate the other direction that forces the blades to go in the correct direction. Um, and really, after that, there's not really much to, more to say. Ultimately, the, because the motor itself stays still apart from that initial twist at the beginning, and once you know, once it's started, it will then return to with, by spring to its default position as the blades are running. Uh, because this bit's static, well, there's the, the flex that's going in the top. Basically, goes down to the bottom, splits out, and then just as heat, I think, I think that's heat shrink, they've just basically soldered it onto the two wires coming out the winding in there. Um, it's really very simple. Uh, I'll let you see in the end there, so you can actually see the sort of the actual motor, and you can feel it cogging. Now, here's the other interesting thing. This does generate quite a modest amount. This can give you a shock if you hold your finger over the end of the pins. Oh, hold on, let me demonstrate that by telling you what I feel. If I put my finger over the pins like this, and then I, oh, let's see if I can do this. I'll just describe what I'm getting here. I'm trying to actually keep that thing away from there. And if I get this up to a fast enough speed, 
I could feel a slight tingling from those metal pins because it is actually passing a modest current. And I've, I'll, you know what? The next bit of the video, I'll actually show you what sort of voltage and current we're getting from this. That's the best thing to do. But uh, I'll just pause now and uh, we'll try that out. So I've hooked it up to a meter now and I just twisted the wires around the probes and onto these because I didn't have any crocodile or alligator clips here uh, handy. So um, it's, it's currently set to volts AC because it will be AC that's coming out of this. And if I start spinning this, you can see it's quite easy to go in excess of 70 volts, which is presumably why I was getting quite a bit of a tingle of it. Um, however, if I change it to the current setting, so I change it to the milliamps setting, and select AC milliamps, because that's what it is, it's AC milliamps. The current, it's quite a high physical resistance because uh, it's quite hard to rotate because it is generated into a short circuit. But with a uh, modest rotation, it will go up to about, you know, 10 milliamps and 12 milliamps. It's not that high. Um, however, that is with a dead short, so it's actually quite hard to rotate. It is putting quite a modest resistance out there. So um, you could use this as a little wind turbine, but you know, you're gonna, gonna get, uh, it's optimized for a higher voltage at a lower current. Um, so I'm not sure what applications, unless you use the little converter in that, uh, I suppose ultimately, if you could get a converter, one of those um, buck converters that would can drop it down to five volts or something, you could power little USB power banks, you could charge them off it or, or charge just small sealed lead acid batteries or something like that. Uh, it is quite interesting that it can at least generate in that way. The spring mechanism, incidentally, this uh, shaft, which, like, as I said, it locks if you try to turn it the wrong way, but it will rotate about two full rotations all the way, although it doesn't actually have to do that. It tends to just kick like that a few times when it's starting, and that's enough to actually let the, the motor, the fan blades, get up to the inertia in the correct direction. The mechanism for that, the spring, is so simple because all it is, it's a soft spring, and... It just sits inside. It's a sort of close fit to a barrel, and if so, if you try and rotate it the wrong way, it, as the spring expands, as they do when you you rotate them, um, it um, locks against the outside outside of the barrel, and that stops the spring actually rotating in that direction. But when you turn the opposite direction, it then closes in itself. The spring is sort of winding it up, so it's quite happy to go in the way, and it will go about two revolutions before it uh, gets starts getting tight again. So it's very, very simple. It's just optimised for simplicity. It's quite a neat design. There must have been quite a lot of experimentation uh, into that. Now, I should mention that the each of these, the motor has effectively nine pairs of poles. And um, let's see, I noted that down somewhere, which is now out of reach. Uh, yeah, it's got nine pairs of poles and it's got ma 18 matching magnets. So if you divide the mains frequency he said, pressing on, and absolutely nothing at all happened in the calculator because it's solar-powered and it's completely flat. Oh, that's not very good, is it? <laughs> anyway, it comes out roughly, uh, basically 50 hertz divided by 9. Uh, it, it comes out about 5.5 hertz, and that's where 5.5 RPM, and that's exactly what it actually rotates at, round about that, that speed. Um, so, um... That's quite neat, actually, um, that it tallied up so well, because I was actually counting. It rotates slow enough you can actually sort of count the number of, you know, you can actually tally up the number of revolutions per minute, so to speak, and that's roughly what it came out at. So it's quite neat. It's quite a, a nice little toy.